Hey YouTube modelers, welcome back again. Darren here with episode three of the Miller Buick. Uh, no, this is Yingling, but that might make a pretty cool car too, don't you think? A Yingling car? Anyhow, uh, like I said, Darren here and I'm back with episode three of the Miller Buick. And in this episode, we are going to just kind of get an update of where I'm at. I've done quite a bit of work on the roll cage and chassis. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, we're going to really talk a lot about these tires and what I did. You know, I got called out here on my tires because I got the yellow, uh, yellow letter tires and I uh, was really told how not period correct those were they needed to be white ones so we're going to talk a little bit about that we're going to talk about these monogram tires and uh you know how i weathered them up mostly about tires so stick around uh that's towards the end of the video i hope y'all enjoy it and uh on with the show okay so a quick update on where we're at i know that most everybody has already seen uh, the motor it is done I did get the Buick um, decal put on the front of the air cleaner and I thought that turned out really cool I uh, ended up taking uh, the decal off of one of the old decal sheets and uh, doing it up so that's that turned out pretty cool and uh, that replicates uh, this picture right here I'll put it right right over here <laughs> but uh there's a picture of uh the Buick on the front of that and I'm really kind of like the way that turned out so a little bit more to do on this and you know folks remember this is not a detail you know wire the engine type build um, the whole idea behind this build was I haven't done one in over 20 20 years 25 years so this was a chance for me to break out of the aircraft and in back into a uh, car uh, specifically Winston Cup that was what I used to build when I was a lot younger and I really want to do a detailed build and uh, that's coming up this one here is more or less practice for me so that's why you're not seeing any wiring on here uh, I'm just trying to get familiar with building these kits again so uh, the next one will be wired. I'm going to make sure that I've got the oiling system all plumbed in, cooling system, plug wires, starter, uh, so on and so forth. All that will be plumbed on the next build. And that too will be a step-by-step -step build. So keep your eyes out for that. Matter of fact, perfect chance for me to pitch. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of this car content coming out. I'm really enjoying this NASCAR build. And uh, as I said before, there's going to be another one after this. It's going to be even more detailed. Uh, so make sure you ring the bell. That way you're notified of when I upload more content, more episodes on the uh, Miller Buick, and also the follow-on uh, uh, build that we're going to do after this. So. If you want to follow along, take that journey, take the ride with me, go ahead and subscribe. So, that's where we're at with the motor. I've got various pieces of the front end all painted and done. Uh, this one needs a little bit of touch up. I wasn't real happy with the uh, gloss black that was painted on here, so I went back with a satin. And uh, I like it a lot better, so I need to mask this off and respray the red. But that's easy fix. Same here. That's coming. Uh, the chassis. You'll see that it's come up quite a ways. I've, uh, I've got the dashboard all painted and decaled in. Uh, the steering wheel right now is just mocked in. Um, I am in the process of getting all the roll cage that I can. Uh, the stiffener bar, which I have here, cannot go in yet. Uh, that's going to have to come in last. But I want to try and get as much in here as I can. Uh, so that I can take it off and then paint it. And what I'm talking about is, you'll see here, let's go ahead and do this. Now, I have taken this off since I put the last bar in, but if I pull this tape back, uh, 
get this piece. This tape is really good, good stuff here. So you pull that back. I can now take the chassis off, and all my bars are still in there. So the next step is for on this chassis or the roll cage part is I've got to mask off this. I've got to go ahead and fill this in. This is the way I've decided to do it. Go ahead and fill these gaps and sand it. Mask this. Take the wheel out. All this will be masked. Prime it and paint it all red at one time. So then all that's left is my detail painting on the firewall. And uh, she'll be good to go. I'll have to do that. And I'll have to do some detail painting up in here with the steering box, so on and so forth. The... Uh, this is the fuel cell. I've got it in here. Uh, it's a different color red from the back. Uh, so I've got it. I've started painting it and that's going to need some detail painting and then I can get that in place. On the bottom, the rear end. So this piece is just mocked in. And you can see I've got the differential in place. I've gone ahead and detail painted the pumpkin gears a um, little bit of touch up on the black here needs to be done but other than that I think she's pretty much where I'm gonna as far as I'm gonna take her so radiators done all of the shocks are done and decaled so they're ready to go on and I just actually started putting the seat together so I need to do some stuff in here and get it ready get this painted and then we can start assembling this chassis and I'm, I'm excited about that uh, because once the chassis is painted and assembled I can move on to the body now I have seen online there's a lot of folks out there that like to <laughs> do the bodies first um, and I, I almost did that and I decided, nope, I'm going to save that for last. Uh, it's one of the most enjoyable parts that I remember. Uh, and I also remember I would do the chassis, and then I would turn around and lose interest. I mean, I would do the body, and then I would turn around and lose interest in the chassis, and my car would just sit. So for that reason, I've decided to go ahead and do this part first. Again, there is no detail in here. I didn't put any fuel lines. I didn't put any fire extinguisher lines in there. Uh, nothing of that nature. There's no brake lines run here. There's no brake lines run back here. But, again, on the next one, there will be. And we're going to detail that one. So, uh, let me put... Oh, also, notice that I cut out the window net. I've gone ahead and started to make my window net here out of a window net kit and tape. And this is actually going to hang inside the car uh, once it's all assembled um, instead of outside. I want to make sure that you can see inside this kit because I'm going to put lap belts in there and I'm going to pull the steering wheel off and I'm going to sit it on the dashboard. So I want you to be able to see inside uh, of this one. So that is going to go in just like that. So that's where we are with all the pre-built stuff, getting it ready to go. Uh, and let's take a look at the body. So here's the body. And I have started to do some work on this. You see I've got my front grill and headlight assembly in here. And I've gone in and glued it in and puttied it in and sanded that smooth. Uh, the car that I, my reference pictures come from, you'll see it here again. I'm going to put it right here. Take a look at that. You'll see the uh, body lines are really smooth on that. And that's uh, what I was going for here. So I have got some rivet detail from Archer's Fine Transfers. Uh, and when I get to this point of the body, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them, but they are great. They make a lot of uh, good stuff for armor and aircraft 
and it can also be utilized for race cars especially this rivet, rivet detail up front here I've got the front mounts all puttied in because those are not accurate I'm going to be using these details right here for the front and this is going to coincide with the car that I'm, I'm replicating uh, and you can see the front end of that car in this picture here so that's what we're going to be doing with the front end of the car and that's why I've got to make it smooth as I possibly can so I did think about cutting those out and putting screen in there but I think this is going to look great and as a matter of fact I may pull cut these out and put screen in that I do have some screen here uh, some metal screen and I think that would really look trick sitting back there so that's a possibility we'll see so more sanding to do here and I'm really I really can't wait to uh, get into the body prep and, and start start painting this that's gonna be really cool okay so let's talk a few minutes about tires specifically these and how we get from this twisted blech, from that to that and how we get our wheels from this to that okay so oh, I already know before you all chastise me those are yellow Goodyear Eagle tires uh, letters on those tires and this car right here has white ones right and that is period correct I've already gotten beat up once for it so I already know this but I'm doing both I've got white ones I've got gold ones yellow white I don't know which one I'm gonna do yet because I really like the way this car looks with the yellow tires on it and or the yellow letters maybe I'll do it that way why don't you guys help me out and leave a comment below and tell me what you would do which do you think looks best period correct or do I keep with what the picture of the car's got I'll go go whichever way you you guys vote so let me know now back to tires these are the original monogram tires and you know they were not the best in the world obviously you see the mold lines lots of flash and what really irritated the hell out of me was these I remember as a kid these raised letters and me with white out white paint toothpicks uh, trying to get that painted and it always looked horrible but these days with the aftermarket companies like power slide and you know slicks and the possibilities are endless there's there's just all sorts of things we can do we've got yellow letters with numbering and rim rim uh, pinstriping to you know wheel weights and I mean you name it it's there so the options are there they're endless and it's companies like that that are really helping us modelers get where we need to go with our with stuff like detailing these tires another shout out that I'd like to give is Savino's Savino's from what it's my understanding didn't get the molds for the tires they've made new tires I was able to buy these out of a kit loose bags for I think it was four dollars and fifty cents or five dollars a bag uh, they sell them right there on their website and gone are the raised letters they're already that's that's just one less thing that I've got to worry about taking off or you as a modeler has to worry about taking off they're gone these tires just need to be cleaned up and detailed so that's a plus now what I want to do is I want to talk just a little bit like I said about how I got from I'm gonna put the white one over here how I got from here to here and you know there's there's videos out there on on YouTube about how to use the nut and bolt washer with the drill and that's exactly what I did um, you see here here's a little shot of me sanding these bad boys you know I 
took and sanded them down, sanded the sides, got the Goodyear off. Um, and you know, for all for those of y'all that don't know how this works, it's, it's a pretty simple proposition. You take the tire, you put it in here, you center it up, up Goodyear out because you want to be able to sand that off. So you, you get it centered up on there. Uh, my setup here that I did because I've got a longer shank here, I got to use two tires. So I put the second tire on there, right? Get my washer, my second washer, put it on, get everything centered up, and put the nut on. That locks it all down. Right, gets it all good and tight, like so. I get my trusty drill. This is a big one, but I know. But uh, put the drill on, hold your ears. And now I can just spin those and use my abrasive stick sand those down right use this get the side wall sanded down until that good years off then all I have to do is take off take it out of the the jig get me some sandpaper and just finish sanding up the sides and that brings me to this this is a raw tire I just actually got through doing nothing to it I did two of them okay and they're all sanded smooth now what you've got to do after this and this is a must because if you're gonna put these decals down in any type of clear coat you've got to clean these really really well and what I use is I just got an alcohol and distilled water mixture I keep in my bottle for cleaning stuff I take it I love these squeeze bottles these things are awesome. But I take it and I just wet my paper towel and clean the tire off. It's alcohol. It's going to clean all the yuck off there. And I'm only worried about the side wall because that's where I'm going to be putting my decal. So I get that good and clean. Do the other one. And another reason why I like using the alcohol is it dries really, really fast. And before you do any, especially before you do any clear dull coat on these tires, you have got to make sure they are completely dry. So, there you go. It's that simple. They are now clean. These are sanded. And uh, in reality, I did it off camera with my drill a while ago. But in reality, it took 10 minutes to get them to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up now. And I'm going to throw some decals on these tires. Okay, so you guys know, decaling is decaling, right? What are some of the basic things we need? Well, we need water. Got it. Need our Microsol microset right got it and if you don't have one of these you need one <laughs> notice that don't fall out as I got this from uh, masterpiece models over there it holds all, all my stuff uh, that and paint and thinners but great little great little tool to have there but we need those and we need a soft brush so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and dip my decals. I'm going to do these in white and then I'm going to let them sit here. Just going to wait. I'm not going to make y'all wait. When they're loose I'll come back. Okay they're loose so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get myself some of this microset. Remember, microset sets the decals. It helps with adhesion. So it's important on this rubber that you do this. Microset on both tires all the way around. And 
and then we're going to put our rubber, our, our Goodyear decals on. One, we'll turn this one around. Two, and three, turn this one around. Four. Now, what I like to do is I like to try and get these centered on each other as best I can. And I think that looks pretty good right there. And this one. Get that one centered up. Again, I think that that looks pretty good right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cotton swab here and I'm going to try and get some of this excess fluid up. Now, being that this is our rubber, these decals are going to slide around pretty easily. So slowly, I'm going to attempt work the water out here as best I can without moving them. Now see that one moved a little bit and I can't have that so I'm going to get back underneath here and this is where the trial and error comes right and just straighten that out again and try this one more time. That's pretty good and again I'm going to just slowly roll over that and try to get just like that. This one, roll, roll, get as much of that water out from underneath there as you can, and decal set, micro, micro set. There you go. Now, this is the important part let it dry. Don't touch it. Let it dry. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera. I've got the little left uh, or the right rear, left rear stickers I'm going to put on there. I'll get those put on and then I'm going to come back once this is dry and we're going to talk about clear. So see you shortly. Okay, so here we are. You can see I've got these fairly well burnt in. I used a lot of the micro saw and most importantly I've let these things dry and I mean it's been a couple of hours since I uh, I think I did three coats uh, about 20 minutes apart and then I let them sit for a couple of hours after the last coat so it, it's really really dry and uh, what I'm gonna do now what I like this I just like to take a dab of just a water and just kind of take lightly go over the tire here and what this does is it's going to uh, take some of that um, residue from the uh, micro saw off and uh, I just do it real light I don't put a lot of water on there here again because I don't want to saturate the tire it's just damp uh, and it t takes that off there fairly well I, mean, I can't even squeeze water out of this so uh, Do that, and that will evaporate most coats. It goes away fairly quickly. Uh, this one here is already, already faded back to dry. So then, my last step is I like to take my Super Clear MRP Super Clear Semi Matte Varnish. This isn't a dead flat. It's got just a little bit of something to it. I'm going to wake that up. And get my old Badger Chrome here and a pipette. And it doesn't take a lot, right? So I'm going to put like four or five drops in there. And that's it. We'll check that spray. Good. And just lightly. 
starting to coat this tire. You can see it get damp. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to pull this in some, so we're in a little bit closer. I want you to see in here, you can actually see it start to get damp, little spots in there. And I don't pull it. I just kind of give it a dusting. Now what I found is, I'm going to show you an example of why I don't pull these. I just try and take and level everything out. So this tire here, this one here had a thick coat on it. And of course now it's rubber, right? So we're putting a paint on top of that rubber. So if you pinch this, look what it does. See that? Look how I did that. So it just breaks it loose. And I did this because I, I can, I'm going to clean this off and redo it. I already plan on redoing this tire, but I wanted to show that demonstration because I want you to understand that you're putting paint on rubber. So if you take these and you start to squeeze on them, this is what's going to happen. Don't squeeze on them. Okay, that's just to show you exactly what will happen. You know, don't do it. You don't squeeze on them, they stay really nice looking. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, this one here has got a good coat on it, and you'll see, I think that looks really, really good. Uh, we'll do this one. There you go. Just trying to take the shine off the decal and blend it. That's it. Simple. And there we have two tires that are are they show quality now? Probably not, but they're ready to go. And I can put a finished rim in that, and it will look good all day long. Looks smart. Looks authentic. I like it. So, now the rims. I want to talk just a little bit about the rims. These were, like I showed you before, originally chrome and what I did they need to be body color so I went ahead and I soaked these in bleach stripped all the chrome off I came back with it and the hub in the middle on these rims was actually hollow right and it has a little you'll see on these it's got a little spot in the middle I filled those in with some putty took a couple of coats, smoothed it off flat, painted the whole thing, and then detailed the uh, lugs in there, put the decals on. The uh, I used some uh, panel line, panel liner inside the rim uh, openings and let them dry, and uh, that gave me the uh, black appearance inside. So, really simple. Uh, if I was doing a show car, I would probably go ahead and drill each one of those slots out. Uh, but that's not the case here. Uh, but I think that's a pretty convincing look. And, uh, you know, when we get done with this car, I think it's going to be, you know, for a, a quick off the shelf build, uh, it's going to be really something to look at. So that's about all I've got. Uh, here are some pictures. I'll finish that up. Some pictures of some finished stuff and when we come back to the next episode I'm hoping to have all of this painted and installed I will show you all how I do that in the next episode and we are going to start masking and prepping this for paint thanks for tuning in guys y'all have a good one
Good night.